Imagine powering your home with an EV battery. Sounds amazing, doesn't it? So why isn't it happening? Vehicle to home technology has promised to be the next big thing in energy independence for a long time. But there's a bit of a roadblock and it's a little bit more complicated than you might think. So when we look at connecting an EV to our home, there are three competing or complementary technologies. So before we dive into vehicle to home, let's look at these and clarify some of our terminology. You may have heard terms banded around like V2H, V2G, V2L, or even V2X. Confused? I was. Let's start with V2G. Because V2G, or vehicle to grid, refers to a two-way flow of electrical power between your electric vehicle and the electrical grid. It allows the EV to not only draw power from the grid to charge its batteries up, but also to send power back to the grid. V2G allows the electricity provider to control the charge and discharge of your car battery. And this helps balance the grid, but... It also means you should get the lowest costs for charging your car because you're helping the energy provider by providing power when it needs it and taking power when it has an excess. Now let's be clear here, you do not control when it charges or when it discharges. You're basically handing over control of your EV battery to the energy company. Now you could say that Octopus Intelligent Go already does this today whereas they decide when your charging schedule starts, but they don't have the ability to discharge your car back to the grid. That's known as V2G, or vehicle to grid technology. Now let's talk about V2H, vehicle to home, and this is the thing that most of us are probably interested in. V2H refers to the two-way flow of electrical power between your electric car and your house. It allows your home to draw power from the EV battery to run loads in the home without needing to draw power from the grid. The EV continues to charge as normal using off-peak power, it stores it in the battery, but feeds power back into the home when you require it. Now the main difference between V2G and V2H is that one is controlled by the energy company and the other is controlled by you. Now there's another variant out there, as if it wasn't confusing enough already, called V2L, or vehicle to load. Now this is a more nuanced technology as it allows EVs to power electrical loads by usually through a plug socket on the vehicle. Now this could be something like the uh, Ford Lightning pickup trucks or the Rivians that have plug sockets in the bed of the pickup truck. Or in the case of the Hyundai Ionic cars, they have a little adapter that you plug into the car and it provides a standard household outlet on the side. Now these are normally used in places where there is no electricity. So maybe if you're a contractor and you're working at a job site and you need electrical power, then you can power it directly off your vehicle. Now in most home cases, these are probably going to be used during blackout conditions. So the electricity grid has gone down, you want to keep your fridge and your freezer uh, running, so you run an extension cable out to the garage and you plug it into the car and it's able to supply power to those individual devices. Now this is not supplying power to the entire house. This is only supplying power to a limited number of devices that are connected directly to the car. So there is no connection between the car and the electrical panels in your house. Then finally, V2X. V2X is really a media term where they don't really understand the difference between V2G, V2L, V2H. So they use V2X as a one encompassing term that encompasses all of these technologies, even though they're completely different from each other. So today we're going to talk about vehicle to home because that's the one that most people believe will have an impact on their lives. So let's look at how a typical home with solar and batteries works with an electric vehicle today. DC power is generated by your solar panels and that gets sent to your inverter. The inverter then makes a decision whether or not it will store the power by routing the DC directly to the batteries to be stored or it converts it to AC to supply the home, your car, or even export that power to the grid. Now, one of the issues with this type of system is there is a measurable loss in converting DC to AC, or AC back into DC. 
Now, when you're converting DC to AC, there can be a loss of anywhere between 2 and 4%. Then if the power is sent to an electric vehicle, the car charger supplies AC power to the car, but the car needs it to be converted back into DC to store it in the battery. So there's another 2 to 4% loss on the other side. Over the course of the year, this can add up significantly. So if we take an average of 200 charges a year, maybe an average of about 40 kilowatt hours per charge, you could be losing anything between 316 and 627 kilowatt hours a year just in conversion losses. So is there a better way to do this? Well, yes. The cars require DC to charge their batteries. So really what we want to do is take DC power directly from our solar panels or our batteries and send it straight to the car. Now, if we did this, there would still be energy losses. It's not a perfect system, but we could literally cut the wasted energy in half by using direct DC charging at home. Now, everything we've talked about so far has been one way. It's been from your home, your solar, your batteries to the car. But why can't we go the other way? Why can't we take DC power from the car battery, take it to the inverter, either store it as DC power in our batteries or convert it into AC to supply loads within the home. Now let's be honest about this. A car is really just a battery with wheels. It discharges power from the battery when needed to the motors. So why can't it discharge it to our house? Now if the inverter could talk directly to the car and charge and discharge its battery as needed, the car just becomes one more battery in the system. The inverter still becomes the single platform that you use to manage your home's power needs and it draws power from your solar panels, from your home battery or from your EV as it's needed. Now here's the problem. Do the car companies actually want this? This is not their core competency. This is an added feature that they could add to their cars, but do they really want to? Car companies are very good at trying to keep you in their ecosystem. We all know that if you like a particular brand of car, the likelihood is the next car that you buy will be the same brand. You'll go to that car showroom before you go and look at other cars. So car companies want to keep their customers in their ecosystem. And they certainly don't want to have to support hardware from other vendors to make these kind of solutions work. To make this a reality, there are two things that are required. It requires a software and sometimes a hardware change to some of the cars to manage this. And it requires a device to take DC from your car and convert it to AC for the house. Now, for those of us that have solar today, we already have number two. It's called our inverter. Now, we already also have companies producing DC car charging hardware, like SIG Energy. They have a, a module that goes into their battery stack that has a DC car charger. Now, they claim to be vehicle to home ready, but are they? To be vehicle to home ready, you need to be able to test with cars that are currently on the market. Now, there is only one car on the market that supports vehicle to home, and that was Nissan, who introduced a trial four years ago. And after the trial, they actually left the hardware with the people who had those cars. So if you still have your original Nissan and you still have the hardware, then you probably have some V2H technology already. But that doesn't work with the new DC charging system from SIG Energy. But what about the cars? Well, that's the problem. Car makers are not in any rush to make this happen. As I said a moment ago, Nissan began trials over four years ago. They installed V2G systems into a number of people's houses, and from everything I've heard, it was a great success. And then they stopped doing it and never spoke about it again for another four years. Now, they've just recently announced that they're going to be bringing V2G technology to the market soon, but only with their next generation of cars. Remember what I said a moment ago about car manufacturers liking to keep you in their ecosystem? So the current car you've got, no matter how good an EV it is, isn't going to work with this Nissan system. And I can guarantee you only Nissan cars will work with Nissan hardware. All the other car manufacturers have been very quiet. 
Ask yourself what is the biggest fear from a car manufacturer's point of view about V2H technology. It's probably damage to the battery. Because if you've bought a new car and you've plugged it into your home system and for whatever reason the battery gets damaged, who's responsible for replacing it under warranty? Is it the car manufacturer's responsibility or is it the home V2H system manufacturer's responsibility? So from the car manufacturer's point of view, the way they mitigate this is they will only support an end-to-end -end solution that comprises their hardware. So no third-party inverters, no third-party chargers. You have to use their car with their software, with their hardware plugged into your house. Now, a question for all of you. Would you replace or augment your home system with a car vendor's hardware? Now you've got two different apps to manage, two different ecosystems, and who's to blame if something doesn't work? Do you think the vendors are going to put their hands up or are they just going to point at each other and say it's their fault? Now what happens if you change your car? You decide, I don't want a Nissan anymore, I'm going to go and buy a VW. Do you have to rip out all of the V2H hardware and go and buy VW's V2H hardware? And I think this is their plan. They will produce V2H hardware, but it will be exclusive to their ecosystem and exclusive to certain models of cars. And in a few years' time, when the next generation of cars are available, guess what? You're probably going to have to upgrade that hardware as well. Now, look at it from the other point of view. If you're a solar vendor, um, in my case, I use SolarEdge. SolarEdge want you to buy add-ons to their platform. So they want to produce a DC charger. They will produce that that works with their inverters and their batteries to make sure everything works. But they won't be able to talk to the car. So there needs to be a middle ground. Now there probably needs to be standards for V2H. That means that solar inverter manufacturers, battery manufacturers, car charger manufacturers, car vendors, all of them need to agree on a set of standards. Standards like this take a long time to agree. And quite often, by the time they actually get implemented, they're already out of date. So what will it take to fix this problem and get us the vehicle to home technology that we're all waiting for? So I think the first step is you're gonna see partnerships. The partnerships between the car vendors and the solar inverters, but again, that's gonna limit your choice. Let's say VW do a partnership with SolarEdge. Does that mean as a SolarEdge owner, I'm limited to only buying VWs? What if I wanna buy something else? What if I want to change my hardware vendor? Do I now have to rip all that out because the partnership only allows for Nissan cars to be connected to solar edge inverters? Ultimately, this is probably going to need legislation from government to sort this out. And again, just like standards, that takes a long, long time. Now, there may be other solutions. If you know of another way to solve this problem, then hit me up in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think on the topic. But because of all of this, this is why I believe that vehicle-to-home technology is not coming anytime soon.